Good evening, or good afternoon, or good whatever part of the day it is for you. For me, it is a little after midnight. Uh, the deplatforming continues, and so does the hysterical rhetoric coming from the left. Uh, that's to be expected. And... It is a good demonstration of how the left has no principles whatsoever. The communists have no principles. And if you want to know how I know this, aside from the obvious, besides the fact that I have eyes and ears, you just have to look back at history. And you don't have to look back that far. I mean, everyone remembers people talking like about uh, Bill a Bill Ayers, Bill Ayers, you know, Obama's uh, radical mentor. But a lot of people don't really realize that he was he wasn't just a radical mentor, and that the same people, the same people, not not like the disciples, although that's some of the same people too. The same people that are calling the protest on the 6th and a, a, an uprising, a uh, attempted coup. The same people did this. At one minute before one o'clock this morning, the switchboard at the Capitol received a phone call. A man's voice said a bomb would go off in the building in half an hour. At 1.30 in the morning, it did. In a small, unmarked restroom on the ground floor of the Senate side, next to a barber shop and near several small offices, including one committee hearing room, for a report on the first serious damage to the nation's foremost structure since the British burned it in 1814, here is ABC congressional correspondent Bob Clark. There was alarm for a time that other bombs might still be hidden inside the Capitol. Police used dogs specially trained to sniff out explosives in a painstaking search both inside and outside the building. The single bomb set off by a timing device left the men's room a shambles, plumbing demolished, bricks and plaster ripped from walls. Army and FBI experts sifted the debris, seeking a clue to the nature of the explosive. There was heavy damage to the nearby barber shop. Windows were smashed there and 100 feet away in the Senate restaurant where tables were overturned and a priceless stained glass mosaic destroyed. Damage estimated in the hundreds of thousands of dollars might have been far worse, but for the three-foot-thick walls in the oldest part of the Capitol. As it was, the violent explosion ripped off doors in nearby conference rooms. There was no damage to the Senate chamber itself on the floor above. Daylight revealed more smashed windows and debris. Tourists were barred from the Senate wing all day, but the entire Capitol will be reopened to the public as soon as possible. Everyone entering the Senate wing today had to pass a security check. At one minute. So, I mean, they they literally bombed the Capitol in 1971. Not people like them, them. 
Those people. The guy who's, who's going to be president now was vice president for the guy whose quote-unquote autobiography was written by the guy who bombed the Capitol. That news report that, that I just played from 1971, the guy who did that wrote Obama's autobiography. And now Obama's vice president will be occupying the White House once again. Now, if that's not enough, you know, because it wasn't enough, apparently, in 1971, in 1983, Susan Rosenberg a name that probably no one's familiar with, Susan Rosenberg bombed the Capitol again in 1983. When they arrested her, and it took years, because this was before the surveillance state. See, this is why they get the, got the surveillance state kicked off. Because this kind of stuff was much easier to do when you couldn't listen to everyone's communications and tra- track their location all the time. Uh, I don't know if you guys, I mean, just look at the, if you know anything about the history of the 60s, there's like assassinations and bombings, all kinds of stuff was going down because the technology uh, was, well, the technology in a way was assisting both sides equally and the state hadn't quite got their surveillance state. But Susan Rosenberg, when she was arrested, I think a couple years later, they found her with a cache of, of automatic weapons and explosives. And her group, and she actually, one of her groups, she was a, a, uh, a radical Jewish leftist who was involved with, I mean, a laundry list of extremist groups. One of her groups also uh, robbed Brinks trucks. They did, they did, they performed bank robberies to fund their operation. And in one of these robberies, they killed, I think like uh, it was four people. It was the Brinks guards and a, a cop. They were very effective, the, this group, because apparently she was also instrumental in breaking one of those, those uh, one of the women that were involved in that robbery out of prison. But they decided to go easy on Susan Rosenberg, and they didn't bother prosecuting her for that crime. They just prosecuted her for the bombing. And they gave her 56 years. 56 years. So you think that she'd still be in prison today, right? The bombing was in 1983. No such luck. No such luck. Because just 16 years later on Bill Clinton's last day in office, he commuted her sentence. And now, today, she is involved with Black Lives Matter. How about that? How about that? Now, what this illustrates is that the Democrats play to win. And they play the long game. And it works. And they're winning. They're winning. They're winning because they play hardball. They're winning because... Democrats today, if you were to ask them to condemn either one of those bombings, wouldn't do it. They like these people. They like Bill Ayers. They like Susan Rosenberg. Even Snopes, if you go to look up the the Snopes article on Susan Rosenberg with being this Black Lives Matter lady that bombed the Capitol... They're like, it's kind of true. Like, they can't even just say it's true. They're like, ah, oh, well, it's it's complicated. It's cop, you know, it's, you know. Eh. 
It's not complicated. It's not complicated at all. And neither is uh, how the the right is, uh, you know, the establishment right, how they are reacting to current events. It's not complicated. They don't want to win. They've never wanted to win. They've never wanted to win. They get paid to lose. They get paid to lose, and and that's and they're doing their job right now. They're doing their job. You know, it's funny. We still don't know what happened with the Vegas shooting. Like the FBI, you know, couldn't figure out a motive for the, the the Vegas shooting. Couldn't figure out anything that was going on with that, right? But they already got the guy that sat in Pelosi's chair. All the Antifa people that ever got arrested, it's like catch and release, right? Now, the irony is the people they're going after now, the Trump supporters they're going after now, any of them that destroyed government or federal property, guess what? Remember Trump's law that he, or maybe it was a uh, executive order to uh, protect the statues that were being pulled down? Well, guess what? That's going to be used against them now. 10 years, 10 years. Imagine that. Imagine that you go, you break a window at the Capitol and you get 10 years. Minimum. And that's just one charge. Who knows what other charges they'll, they'll put together. But Hillary Clinton, she's not worth investigating. No one's investigating the Clinton Foundation. No one's investigating uh, Obama's role in, in the FISA warrant fiasco of 2016. No one's going after James Clapper for committing perjury in front of Congress on video. Because rule of law is dead. Rule of law is dead. It's rule of ruling class. And those people on the sixth defied the ruling class. So they committed the ultimate sin. And the fervor in which the government is supposed to be defending the integrity of the Constitution because the Constitution is meaningless and it's been replaced by a class of people that is the same fervor that is going to be the spirit of how they go after these fucking people. That's just the way it is. All right, I've missed a couple of uh, these things. I'm going to try to scroll past. COVID and BLM exposed what a total worthless wheat cock Trump truly is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, look, yeah. Uh, It's funny because, look, I'm not going to lie, and I'm the furthest thing from a Q-tard. I do feel a little bit weird about how Trump hasn't said shit. And I really don't know if it's because he's just a little pussy that's hiding, which is my first instinct. Um, But it's a little weird right now, right? Everyone kind of feels it like something weird's going down. I just don't. I I think that it's it's like my I think it's my my mind has the situation articulated properly. And there's a part of me that just is like, no, we can't, this can't be, this can't be how we go out. And I think this is how we go out, boys. 
I think this is how, how we go out. And uh, it, it's that's, which is precisely why you know that's the that's the appeal to the the Q theories and all this other stuff, right? Is people don't want this to be how it ends. It's kind of like if you watch if you've been really committed to like a, a television series and you've been watching it. And then it gets the last episode, and it's just like lame. And you're just like, no, this this can't be this can't be it. This isn't it. And I watched this stupid show for however many years, and this is how it ends. What? Or a book, or anything else like that. And I think that's just how people are looking at America. Going, wait, wait, hold on, what? No, come on. The hero has to come back and like save the day, right? Like that's that's what happens. Come on, please. No. Speaking of stories, someone says D O T R to win. Well, look, uh, not not until after the twentieth, okay. Uh, I think what I'm going to be doing, and I think this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's look, it's not what well, it's already the eleventh right now, technically, right? So nine more days, and uh, I think I'm going to try to stream every night until the twentieth. Uh, in which case, I'm going to have to, unless you know, unless shit pops off, right? But. Uh, I, I will focus on, well, first I'll get the Simpsons video out the door, and then I'm going to focus on the book, try to get it out, at, uh, it's probably going to be beginning of February, that's my projected timeline, and uh, I'll probably do streams regularly, but not every single night, but until the 20th, that's the plan right now. Is I'm gonna to try to do a stream every single night, just so we can we can do the countdown to you know basically watch the ball drop you know for the next nine days, the countdown to the end of the experiment, and, and, and at that point very likely the end of my ability to do streaming every single night, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, another diamond never knew the Obama thing is this real life? Yeah, like look. The reason why I'm blackpilled and so many younger people think that I'm just being some curmudgeon, that I'm just being some kind of asshole about stuff, is they don't know about all the shit that I already know. And I'm not saying that to, like, brag. I'm just saying, like, they're, like, if you're, like, 19 or 20, this happened when you were, you know, like, 12 or whatever. You know, so, like, the, you don't know this shit. Obama most likely wasn't born in, the, in America. Regardless of where he was born, his birth certificate's fake. And he was put in office by the guy who bombed the Capitol. And he moved the he moved the Overton window so far to the left in such a small period of time that that's why we're at where we're at today. And they're winning. They're winning. Everyone sensed they were winning. That's why Trump got elected because everyone sensed they were winning. Everyone sensed the existential threat. And that's why they put Trump in office. And that's why they believe this Q nonsense. Because that's what that was. That's what that's that was the expectation. Their expectation was, okay, we'll we'll finally get someone in there that's gonna get all this shit done. Look, I, I was kind of hoping for that too. It's just that I I'm not gullible. And so I knew right away. When Trump prevented the JFK documents, not only did he prevent the JFK documents that were going to be released automatically, all he had to do was nothing. That's all he had to do. He just had to do nothing and they would just get released. Not only did he step in and stop them from getting released, he then lied immediately after that. He went on Twitter and said, I solved JFK. And uh, that's when I was like, the fuck you did you're full of shit or you're an idiot. And I still don't know which one. But if you're not if you're not able to give us the truth about what happened fucking 60 years ago, you're not going to give us the truth of what's happening now. And that was pretty immediate after I think that was like the November after he was his sworn in. Did that happen?
And I think we all know why he doesn't want those documents released, because I think there's a lot of people, at least not everyone does, maybe. But there's a lot of people that know about a little country on the other side of the planet that might have been involved. Everyone knows the name Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby, he was a gangster. Jack Ruby. They don't know that Jack Ruby's real name was Jack Rubenstein. And that he was an Israeli gunrunner. They don't know that. The Zabruder film. The Zabruder film. They also don't know that Zabruder is also Jewish. And had been to Israel several times. Yep. The Germ- some some ever there's some people that are nodding their heads and there's other people who are just like what? No, that's that's why I'm black pilled. This stuff goes way back. This isn't like a new thing. The left didn't just like spring up out of nowhere and like take control of the culture and and uh, are on the precipice of, of enslaving the West out of nowhere. Okay, like this isn't this was a long game. And to like, the, I saw a comment that flipped by, are, why are you still in the left-right paradigm? Because I'm not a fucking idiot, that's why. There is a difference. There's a fundamental difference between the left and the right. And, and these people that try to say, oh, they're just trying to divide us. They're just divided, we fall. We're already fucking divided, bitch. You think when, when, they, when they impose all these things, like look, look at Twitter with, with all the censorships going on. Are the left, are the people on the left concerned about it? No, they're not going to get fucking banned. They know this. It's descriptive. The ruling class is on the left. And has been for several decades. And now, well, and now openly, right? Presidency, House, Senate. There's a difference. Wise up. Don't fall for this, like, fucking boomer hippie shit about how we all need to hold hands and fuck each other in the ass to, to beat the ruling class. Now, obviously, it's, it's a little more complicated than just left-right. But look, I don't want to sit here and have to go into, like, the granularity of every little specific viewpoint that every motherfucker has Every time I talk about this shit, when it's just easy, everyone knows what you mean. So just, it's so frustrating. It's like, yeah, it's not Democrats versus Republicans. It's right versus left. The Republicans are not on the right. In case you haven't noticed, they never have been. Or certainly not in my lifetime because they've, they have held office. They've had, they've had the majority. They've had the ability to get a lot of shit done, to stop a lot of this stuff, and they've never fucking done it. They're just, they, just, they just slow it down. See, the Republicans are like uh, the, the newer cars that have the governing chip in them, right? Like your car is capable of going 200 miles an hour, but if you actually try to do that, this chip clicks in and, and turns off your gas. So you can't drive like a maniac. That's what the that's what the Republicans are. They're just there not to actually oppose the, the Democrats, but to slow them down when they start going too fast. That's it. That's it. How was Trump right wing? What right wing thing did he do? Now any any little symbolic thing that he did will be immediately undone on January 21st and then some all right I'm gonna scroll down here through chat which there's a lot to scroll through but yeah it, it that's you got uh, look you got to pick a side you got to pick a side and yeah I get it there's the Finkel think thing there's the the binary thinking there's all that stuff yeah that exists I'm not saying you have to be a Democrat or a Republican I'm saying that if you're a communist, that's not the same as me. I, I have nothing in common with a communist. A communist, 
He might want to destroy the state. He might want to get rid of the system and have a different system in the same way that I want to have a different system. But his system isn't something I want to live under. So no, we can't just hold hands and, and let's go after the let's go after the ruling class together. No, because we have nothing in common. We have nothing in common. Someone says the American regime wants us all dead. And yes, they do. And yes, they will try to do that, I think. Oh, I, well, the, the, they will try. They are. They've been trying. <coughs> it's been a slow motion war of attrition. They'll go after full force everyone that they can find an excuse to go for. But a lot of it's just going to be the slow drip. It's going to be the same long game that, that I didn't tell you that's been working for several, I mean, maybe almost a hundred years or a hundred years or more. It's, it's been a downward spiral. It's like I was saying, it's like the leaf going for the drain. It, the, it, it wasn't easy to notice that you're even headed towards a drain when you're far enough away from the drain. Cause you're just slowly coasting. It's not until like you're right by the drain and the leaf spinning fucking around really fast that you start to realize, Oh shit, we're, this is not good. We're caught in some kind of uh, vortex here that we're not going to get out of. And we are caught, caught in a vortex right now, and I don't suspect we'll get out of it. And it's not because we don't have the ability to get out of it. It's just because we don't have the... Well, I guess, I don't know. In a way, maybe we don't have the ability to get out of it. You know? It's like saying... like, like I, don't, I, I feel like if I say we don't have the ability... Uh, I feel like if we say we have the ability to get out of it, we're just not doing it. Is it's a is there really a difference if you're not willing to do do uh, to stand up for your rights and defend your country or defend your people? If you're not willing to do it, that's part of the. It's kind of like saying, well, this computer could do what we want it to do. The hardware is capable of doing it. The software just doesn't. Uh, it's not compatible with this uh, program. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Functionally, it doesn't really matter. Then it, it can't do it. Unless you reinstall a new OS. And in this case, that, that's much harder than it sounds. Unfortunately, people, it is kind of like, I guess that's what it's like. It's like uh, we have an entire population of PCs that you could technically get a hacked version of OS X installed on. Like the hardware is compatible with it. You could do it. OS X 86, you know, one of these hacked ones. Uh, it's been a long time since I fiddled with that, but I'm sure it's still around. And uh, you can't just deploy it globally. You just can't send out an update that's going to update all these machines because it's an operating system that has to be changed out. So you have to physically interact with each and every single computer to change it. And even then, you might come, on, come up with some compatibility problems. And that's, that's basically what we're dealing with right now. We have this army of, of people whose hardware may or may not be compatible with the operating system that we need them running to run the right software, right? And we can't just globally spam out an update that's going to, you know, get them, get them going. We have to one by one go to these fucking people and try to, you know, wipe out the old hard drive and, and reinstall. And it look, that's... Yeah, it's a monumental task when you're talking about the numbers we're talking about. And you're going to have a lot of people just stuck, stuck in these infinite loops running their old, the old software. Totally incapable and totally inc incompatible with your ideas. Because their operating system was installed by the same people who are running the show. And they specifically crippled the software, the operating system, so that it couldn't. Be compatible with what you want to run on them. And it, it's not an easy thing. I'm going to maybe skip a bunch of uh, 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 donations here because I'm trying to scroll to the newest comment and uh, it's chat's going so fast. I think it might just be easier for me to go to the newest one. I'm trying, trying to scroll, but you guys know my chat sucks. 
Actually, we might wait. Well, if I missed your thing, I apologize. Oh, wait. No, here's one. This is glory for those of us that are prepared. Well, look, this is something that a lot of people have seen coming. It's, it's something that a lot of people have seen coming. And it's not something that we're like, yes, excellent, yes. But there is something about, like, look, it, and it's not even like a, a ha-ha, we told you, you know, if only you'd, you'd been prepared, like, you know, I've been telling you to do for the last several years, you wouldn't be worried about this. It's not that. It's equally as frustrating as when no one would listen to you. It's equally as frustrating. Because we're still behind. It doesn't fix the problem. It fixes my immediate problem, but it doesn't fix the the ultimate problem. Like we're still get like we're still going down the drain. You know what I mean? And one of the reasons why I told people to prepare wasn't so that you could survive the the, the trip down the drain. I and mean, that's a big part of it. But that you would have less fear about confronting the authority, like I think we talked about uh, yesterday and the day before, about how the way that the country is structured, the way that the, uh, because of this rule of law thing versus ruling, a rule of ruling class, it's more like a company, right? You can't vote your boss out. You either do what your boss says or you get fired. And if you don't have another job lined up, you're going to be kind of just doing what your boss says, right? Well, if you're, if you're in a, a spot where you've got you know, you could essentially retire or not retire, but like uh, you're not going to be, you get enough of a buffer zone, right? Where you could just quit. You could just walk out that second and you're not going to just get evicted a month later because you can't pay your rent, right? Then you're you're going to stick to your principles a little easier because you're not going to be afraid. You're not going to be afraid of what your boss might do if you tell him what you really think. Because if he tells you that you're fired, it's like, so what, bitch? And then you go and chill out for maybe a couple weeks, take a few weeks off, and then start looking for another job. You're good to go. You've got, you've got some savings. You're prepared. And, but when you're not prepared, you're terrified of your boss. You don't want to rock the boat because if you get fired, that's it. You lose everything because you're living paycheck to paycheck. And by the way, that's not just a metaphor. There's a lot of people that they're just, they're really living paycheck to paycheck, especially now, right? And so their obedience is going to not just be to the state, it's going to be the, the corporate structure. And the culture of, of all these corporations is just as left away. I mean, look. Look, look at what's going on with Parler. With, you know, oh my God, that's that, it's so unexpected. No, it's not. It happened to Gab four years ago. And no one fucking cared. But what's happening to Parler right now is, look, they're getting deplatformed the from having their app in the App Store. Okay, well, I'll just go to their website then. Well, no, you're not, because they're going to get the plat- or I think they might be offline already. I'm not sure when that actually takes effect. But they get the platform from Amazon, who <laughs> provides their servers. So now they, they, it's inaccessible. Because the cor- corporate culture of all of these companies is the same. And I'm sure a lot of you guys work at some of these companies or companies like this. And you know what not to say, or you'll have you'll be stuck going to HR. And so if you get stuck going to HR, you know, like it's uh <laughs> you go to the re-education camp, you go to the uh, critical race theory camp. All right, someone just asked, why do Jews change their last names? Why do you think? <laughs> They've been doing that a long, long time, especially because of, you know, credits and movies. If Jews didn't change their last names and you watched a movie, it would just be all Steins and Bergs. 
All right, I'm trying to, again, trying to filter through all this chat stuff, but it's just, it's so laggy, and so I might miss a lot of stuff here. And so if I missed your question, I apologize. I just got to, I just got to go for it and hit the button. Go to the newest message here. Boom. I think we're at the newest message now. So it's just a matter of, uh, it's, it's a matter of time. Everything that they've wanted to do, they're going to do. And, and they're going to do it without, they're going to be ruthless. Remember I was talking last night about why I liked Daniel Day-Lewis's characters in, uh, there will be blood and in, in, uh, what was it, uh, Gangs of New York? Because he was ruthless. He got what he wanted. He got shit done. Right? That's, what, that's how the left is going to operate. And they're going to do it with anger. Because the, for the last four years, they have been enraged. Enraged. With Trump. Irrationally, but you know, they're, they're, they're irrational. That's the thing. But someone says, why do you talk about the left and the right? The left is irrational. We're not the same. We're not the same. If the left was just rational, you'd be right. If I could just make a rational argument to someone on the left, show them how they're wrong about a particular policy or whatever and they would just accept it because it's fact there'd be no problem or there'd be less of a problem but you can't do that you can't do that and you know what there's a genetic difference between the left and the right they're physically different. We're talking about hardware and software. Trying to upgrade the uh, or change the operating system. On a leftist, it's not even compatible with the operating system that you want to install. In fact, to some of these guys, it's like trying to install OS X on a fucking speaking spell. <clears throat> Someone given Ninja Gini. Devin, you fucking called it. Uh, reminder to network with your neighbors. They hate you and want you dead. Yeah. And I look, I take no joy in it. Like, look, there, is there a part of me that wants to go re- dancing around going neener, 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 I told you so, and all this shit? Not even actually that much. Maybe a tiny part of me, but like, no, because I'm, I'm not happy about this. Because I, the reason I was telling people, hey, hey, wake up, is where we're going isn't good. Someone said it really is left versus right. It is. Someone says no reason with commies. Only one way this ends. Exactly. And again, I've been saying this. I did a whole, I did like a whole video, I think in 2017, where I addressed that exact left right thing where I said, yes, there is a left and a right. There is. It's just these days it's more, it's not right versus left. It's right versus wrong. There are just some people who have chosen evil. Have any tips, tricks for a single guy, age 30s, uh, self-employed about uh, file how to file bankruptcy in the USA? I don't know. I've never done that. But I had a friend once that filed bankruptcy and he basically, he ran up, he knew he was going to do it. So he ran up every single fucking uh, credit card that he had. And like, he bought me, like this was, Back when I still played video games, he bought me like a bunch of games. He gifted me all these games on Steam. I was just like, what the hell? Why did he give me all these Steam games? And then I found out later why he did that. Uh, so it's... And honestly, look, if you, if you want to check out... If you're, if you're going to check out of the usury system, I think that'd be a great idea. I think it would be fantastic if everyone... If you, as long as you have a plan as to what you're going to do afterwards... Uh, and consult the lawyer. I don't know exactly all the rules, uh, but my understanding is, I mean, it's the, the slate is wiped clean, right? And who takes it on the chin? All those fucking banks. So if you can find, if there's a way, look, I'm not saying to declare bankruptcy, but if there's a way that you can what, and escape unscathed and just leave them holding the fucking bag, do it. Why not? 
Find it and then never participate in user again. That they never pay, they always get bailed out when they when they don't have. Uh, you know, they they never have risk. They never pay for making bad decisions, right? So why should you? Right? Fucking do it. You as a patriot cannot interface with the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I cannot say the rest of that one. Let's see here. Uh, but yeah, like honestly, there's there's literally no reason to feel bad about declaring bankruptcy. Zero. Zero reason. If you can find a way, and look, I think there's a lot of people, and maybe we should find some guy who's like a, a lawyer that, that, that handles this stuff. They could write out like a, maybe like a tutorial on how to do it and, and get away with it. Like I said, my friend did it. He's got, he owns three houses today and he, he declared bankruptcy and, 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 uh, everything went away. Apparently like all the, the, the debt went away. That was, it was about like 10 years ago, but he's got like three houses. Now he has six kids and he's not like, you know, he doesn't have a job that pays him millions of dollars. I mean, he work he works in software. I don't I don't know specifically what he does anymore, but I know he's not making like a million bucks or even like two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. But yeah, we should honestly. Why not? Why not? Because all that was holding people back from doing that was shame. It was just shame. Why not? Make them pay for their risk. They took a risk. That's that's the usury game, right? It's gambling. And then just never participate in usury ever again. And leave them holding the bag. Fuck them. And because that, that's all it changes, right? It, it fucks up your credit score. So what then? If you're never gonna get a credit card again, who cares? Yeah, if you're never gonna get a loan again, who cares? Oh, but I have to get a loan to get a house. No, you don't. I didn't get a loan for this place. It's a piece of shit. But you know. You don't have to get a loan. Yeah, leave him holding the bag. Who cares? Fuck him. Uh, Devin, you're an inspiration and 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 institution. WLY. I'm not sure what WLY means, but I appreciate the kind words. Borrow from boomers. Yeah, well, yeah, and then and then and just never pay them back too, I guess. But I don't think boomers would loan you money. Boomers are like uh they're like that dragon in, in the Hobbit. <laughs> they're just like they want to just hang out with their gold. They just don't want you to have their gold. They it's so insufferable, these these this generation. And again, obviously hashtag not all boomers. I hate that I have to say that. But yeah, the same thing with the system. Uh, you know, in terms of you know, if if you could look, ultimately, th- think of ama- how what amazing things would happen if we had just this massive wave of people declaring bankruptcy, right? And then getting on to uh, social services as much as humanly possible, right? Like, because you qual, I guarantee you, most of the people listening, you qualify for something. You just don't get it because you don't need it, right? And, but if you just, all right, let's let's fucking uh, let's ride the snake, let's ride the snake down, right? Okay, all right, fuck you, banks, bankruptcy, and now collect. Just apply for anything and everything, even if you you don't need it. Just who cares? And then use it as much as you realistically can. Fuck it. They want to play this game. We'll fucking do it. I'm going to open the chest here. There it goes. Well, the touch screen has been a slightly better tonight. Slightly better tonight. But absolutely, there's no reason. Look, the social contract has been broken. 
So why are you still holding up your side of the obligations? It's almost like you married someone, she cheats on you and then moves in with her boyfriend and you're still like, well, I can't ask anyone out on a date because I'm married. No, oh, the fuck you are. You're not married. You're a cuck. <laughs> you're a cuck if you say that. And this is what I was saying with that rule of law video uh, this last summer. It was like, look, you people are going to start feeling like suckers for following the rules when no one else is. And no, it's not being enforced on anybody else. It's just being enforced on them. You know, just fucking who cares? You, they don't, they're not, they didn't hold up to their side of the bargain. Why are you holding up to yours? If you do, you're a cuck. Imagine like you went to go work for someone and in the interview, you, you agreed to a, a salary. You agreed to like what benefits you're going to get. And then... After you get your first paycheck, you realize they're 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 not paying you. They're paying you like twenty percent of what they said they were paying you. If you if you keep showing up and you keep doing the same work, that's on you, buddy. When I say W L Y, it means we love you. You're the light, the alpha, the omega. <laughs> I don't know if I'm quite that much, but. I appreciate it all the same. But yeah, participating in the system, you're just being a slave. That's that's all you're doing. You're being a slave. And at a certain point, it's your fault. Like if your wife's cheating on you all the time and you don't know about it, because you're not paying attention, you got other things going on in your life. You're a cuck, you just don't know about it. So it's not that it's not on you, right? It's not on you. But once you know, like once you come home from work and your wife, you walk in, your wife's getting fucking railed from behind while blowing some dude and you're in your bed. And you either just keep walking like you didn't see anything or you try to work things out. <laughs> You're, you're a cuck at that point. You're officially a cuck. Doesn't matter if it's been going on and you just didn't know about it for like 10 years. Yeah, that's bad. And that's kind of the situation. But now you know. Now you know. So now if you, if you just keep uh, working late and uh, ignoring the, the, the used condoms in the uh, that you see in the toilet when you get home, that's you. That's you wanting to be a cuck. That's the life that you have chosen. And you have no one to blame but yourself. And it doesn't matter. And look, this is actually a really good, really good metaphor. Because, yeah, is, is a divorce an easy thing? No. Is it a, a good possibility that you'll lose half your shit, maybe more? Yeah. Is it going to be a big mess for your family, your children? Yeah. Will things ever be the same again? No. But are you gonna? Are you just gonna tolerate that? Are you just? Are you literally just gonna tolerate that? You're just gonna be like, uh, you know, I'm. We're staying together for the kids. <laughs> Look, there's instances where that's acceptable. There's a certain amount of uh, of uh, relationship. Trouble that's acceptable. No one's, we're never going to have, you're never going to have a wife that's 100% everything that you want in the same way you're never going to have a government that's 100% everything that you want. And there's a certain level of friction, drama, even maybe even a little betrayal that you can tolerate because it's just, it is, it is what it is. We're humans. No one's perfect. There's no perfect solution. But there should be a line. There should be a line that once crossed, things got to change. Or you're a cuck.
Or you're a cuck. Dev, when I say you have crystallized my beliefs, make no mistake, I am a thousand percent willing to die for us. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but um, it's okay. How many conservatives, mainstream conservatives, mainstream conservatives, always bloviate about the founding fathers? And then, as I showed with that clip with Tucker the other night, the second that anyone even emulates them to the slightest degree, it's, oh, the horror, the horror. Wind Hotels in Vegas owned by uh, Steve uh, Weinberg. Yeah, that's another one. Uh, Wynn, Weinberg changed his name to Win, because how many people would go to the Weinberg Hotel? Not as many people who'd go to the Wynn Hotel, and for the, the same reason that the the same reason that the actors and movies would change their last name, because eventually people would start to wonder, like, what, why is it that when I go see this movie in a country that has less than two percent of a Jewish population, ninety percent of the people in the credits are Jewish? This doesn't make any sense. It's like if you were to go to Vegas and put a giant star of David on every single hotel that was owned and operated by a Jew. There'll be a lot of blue lights. That's just, you know, it is. Well, here's the thing. So someone's saying the storm in the Capitol building will go down as in history as, as the shit uh, heard or heard around the world. Well, no, because if you don't win and we're not winning, it goes down as, see, the winners write the history books. Give it a few years. You know how many movies they're going to make about Trump and Trump supporters and how it was a dark time in our nation's history? You know how many movies they're going to make about that? You know how many movies and TV shows? And look, they are, there's already like a show. I saw one being promoted on Twitter about like the darkest 24 hours in our nation's capital. And, you know, like they're already doing it. And they've got the money to do it. And if they run out of money, they can print more. That's another thing Trump did nothing about. Remember when everyone was saying, oh, no, did you, Trump is now the, the <laughs> he's now the chairman of the Fed. Trump is the, oh, is he now? Is that why our, our debt is now $26 trillion? You know what that means, right? A lot of that debt's owned by the Fed, Right. So we're paying, we're just paying them interest payments to these people who, these faceless, these faceless private company slash, you know, these bankers, we don't know. We don't even know who they are or how much money they get. We will win. I don't know, man. Eventually. See, here's the thing. All these people will say, always say, oh, good always wins. God always wins. Why do you think that has to happen in your lifetime? It doesn't have to happen in your lifetime. It might not even happen in this century. So, it, 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 yeah, good might win. God might win in the end, but the universe... The, the rhythm of the universe, the cycles of, the, of history do not coincide exactly with your lifetime. That's just the way it is. So yeah, will the pendulum come swinging back? Absolutely. Was I kind of hoping that Trump was the beginning of that process? Yes, I was. Does that appear to be the case? No, it doesn't. And look, it wasn't really, it, it was kind of a long shot that Trump was going to be a stop of that. There's so much momentum behind this movement. And I don't, I don't mean by like us, the movement. I mean the people on the left, their movement. They have been building and building and building for, for decade after decade, unobstructed. Trump was just a speed bump. 
He could have been so much more, but he he so far has chosen not to not to uh, not to be any different than really anyone else, except for he he if any he didn't, Trump didn't radicalize the right. Trump radicalized the left more than he radicalized the right. So it's uh you know like there's there's really not anything in the way once if nothing spectacular and unexpected happens in the next 9 days and I don't suspect that anything along those lines will I am still puzzled by some of these people that at least tangentially are, are tied to Trump uh, I am a little surprised to hear some of their rhetoric, rhetoric sound so confident. But again, you know what con man is, right? You know what con man means, right? Con is short for confidence man. So it could just be that they're running to con. God will win in the end. I'm perfectly willing to die for my beliefs as anyone else. A lot of people aren't. Honestly, frankly, they're not. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at. A lot of people are, are they, they'll just, and that's not just right now. This is just historically. That there's a reason why, when you look at these, you know, like the movie The Patriot, you know, about the Revolutionary War, it kind of gives you this impression that uh, the everyone, all the all the colonists, we're all in it together, right? There was like maybe a couple traders here and there that like you know sold people out to the crown and whatever, right? But by and large, the uh, the movie makes it seem like the vast majority of Americans were wanted to form this new country. And that's not the case. And in terms of the fighting, I think it was something like I don't know, like 10 fifteen percent somewhere in there of uh, the, the people actually fought. Uh, but there was lots of people who looked at this as treason. Treason against the crown. What are you guys doing? Why are you revolting? This is treason. This is treason against the king. And uh, so it's... that that's This is always the case. This is always the case. People don't... People like the status quo. People don't want things to change. And look, that's... In some ways, that's good... That's the same, you know, the thing on the right, when you have people that, uh, that don't want things to change, you know, that's why they call them conservatives, right? Because they want to conserve the good parts of the, uh, of what's good about your society and and stuff like that. They rarely do, but that's, that's like the idea, right? So there's some value in not wanting to have radical changes all the time. And but it's just that it's way easier to to uh, not support radical change when it makes you safer. Remember, I was talking about how women uh, are, are fueled less by principle and more by survival. More by it's it's not about like well I've got the this these ethics that I'm not gonna uh, defy. It's more about well this is gonna make me safer if I do this. Uh, as you feminize an entire fucking the well, the whole West, that's that's going to be how a lot of your men start thinking too. I like Adam Green stuff. Is he real? Or, is he real or a J shill? Uh, my my all my interactions with him have been good. Um, I think he believes at the very least what he says. I think that he, uh. I think he's a he's a yeah I think he's worth watching. I don't I don't uh, I don't sign on on everything that he. I mean, look that that's why I don't like uh, uh everyone asks you like well, what do you think of this guy? We think of this guy. We think of this guy. You know, the, uh, decide for yourself. <laughs> but in terms of like, I have been on streams with him and stuff like that. And I've talked to him privately off streams and stuff, and yeah, he seems cool. He definitely believes what he says. I don't think he's lying. I don't think he's ever lied about anything, at least not that I'm aware of. I'm not a Trumper. I'm a white American who wants change. Exactly. And in fact, I would even say a lot of the people that showed up uh, to the Capitol 
that they uh, a lot of those guys deep down aren't really like they they know they know about Trump. I mean, a lot of them, a lot of them uh, were kind of like Trump bots, right? But I think there was people there that were just like, you know, I don't give a fuck about Trump, but fuck these guys, you know. Ashley Babbitt will not have died in vain. Uh, well, I hope not, but countless people have died in vain and have been 100% forgotten by history. I know it's not a good thing. It's not a, a positive thing to, to, to think to yourself that this could be another one of those instances, but it's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. What about all the people think about this way? Did all those people that died uh, in the Rodney King riots, they died in vain, right? Because that problem never got solved. You know, we still have BLM rioting. In fact, now we got Bank of America giving them half a billion fucking dollars. Those cops that got shot in, uh, what was that, Houston, the BLM shooters? They died in vain because just a few years later, cops were kneeling before the BLM. So it that's, I know again, like it's not a thought that's not a happy thought, but I'm not here to give you guys happy thoughts. I'm, I'm here to get you guys back to reality because there's, that's, there's a huge problem on the right. A huge problem on the right is that there's there's a denial of, of reality. And I know everyone hates the word cope, but it really is a coping mechanism because if you were to see how bad it was, and look, this has always been a problem. This goes all the way back to uh, Henry Ford. Henry Ford said if the American public understood the financial system, the banking system, in America, there'd be people hanging from the lamppost tomorrow morning. Well, they've had a hundred years to figure it out and they still haven't figured it out because ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. People would rather entertain wild conspiracy theories and wild, crazy things that tell them in the end, everything's good and, uh, and, and not have to face the reality or the possibility that like, I might have to actually make some real sacrifices. And it's it, because it's easier. It's just easier to not do it because by and large, the people listening, like, look, I'm not afraid, but I'm realistic enough to know that I'm in real danger at this point. Not today, not tomorrow. But sometime after the 20th, if they round people up, like everyone's like, oh, they're going to send us to FEMA camps or whatever. I'm on the first page or one of the first pages. There's obviously people way bigger than me. But I'm not exactly just lost in the noise. So there's, there's a lot of people out there that they're not, I mean, look, we joke around that we're all on lists and you probably are, right? But there's just too many people. They're not going to be marching people to FEMA camps probably in your lifetime. Not, not in like mass numbers, right? So there's a lot of people that if they just keep doing what they do all the time, they just you know keep working their job, pushing the buttons, pulling the levers, showing up on time. They'll keep getting their their checks. You know they keep getting their health insurance. They'll keep getting everything that they that they need. They'll they'll keep watching their Netflix and all this stuff, and they'll be mad and they'll be upset, and they'll be frustrated as they watch as the society turns against them. But realistically, it's easier if you just check out and just keep watching your Netflix and and eating your Cheetos. Ignorance is bliss.
Ashley Babbitt is the shot heard around the world. I don't know. I hope you're right. I just, like I said, I, uh, I suspect, I suspect that that it's quite possible in a few months, people will say Ashley who, in the same way that they say Michael Hastings, who, in the same way that they say, uh, you know, I can go on and on and on. There's, there's a list of names already. People are like Assange who, you know, uh, and, and there's there's literally uh, countless people who in the moment it seems like it's a big deal and it's someone's life it should be a big deal but it doesn't stop the momentum of what's behind this the real white pill is knowing that we exist right now it you know it's i guess <laughs> <laughs> but do you want to just exist? Do you want to just be a pod person? And uh, do you just want to be a pod person in, in, in the Matrix? Those people are existing. All right. I'm going to open the chest again. I already ordered an Ashley flag. Yeah, look, I, I, look, if you're, if you want, you know, if you want me to be honest here, like I, I, I hope, I hope that she becomes a martyr. And I, I really encourage people to try to meme her into a martyr. And you're right. Her life should not have been taken for nothing. And more than anything, I think people should be demanding the name of the of the the officer that killed her. What BLM does works, right? We don't even know the name of the guy who did it. What would BLM be doing right now? What would BLM be doing right now? Apparently it works, is all I'm saying. Apparently it works. Yeah, we don't know the name of the officer. We don't know. All we know is rumor. The rumor that I heard last is that it was one of uh, Pence's security detail, one of his secret service agents. And uh, because it, it it's not good for the ruling class, you'll pr- we'll probably never know. And if I were her husband, I'd be freaking the hell out right now and making a lot of noise. And I'm actually a little surprised that uh, we don't hear more from this guy. Well, I mean, like, look, his wife just got shot in the fucking neck, so maybe I'm not that surprised. But uh, I hope that we hear from this guy, and I hope that he's, I hope that he's, uh, I don't know, charismatic enough to make that, to help uh, preserve his wife's memory in a positive way. Because yeah, it would be a, it would be, it would be a terrible thing. If she died for nothing, I just think, look, terrible things happen all the time. Terrible things happen all the time. I'll tell you what, I am a little bit upset that... I'm a little upset that we don't hear anything from Trump. And yeah, they took away Twitter from him, but there's not like that's the only way he can communicate with people. Especially now that Trump is on Gab, apparently. Gab, which has uh, been very difficult to uh, load up because of the increased traffic. I really hope they, they can get in front of that because a lot of people just don't have the patience for it. Especially if they don't understand uh what goes into something like that. And a lot of people already, they're not going to use it because there's no app and it doesn't make it easy. Especially I've seen a lot of girls say that like, well, I've, I, I don't, I'm not going to use Gab because it's too clunky or whatever. And yeah, look, there's parts of the user interface. I don't like, I don't care that they don't have an app. I don't even really use the Twitter app very often, if at all. So that doesn't bother me, but I do think that the uh, Gab interface could use a couple tweaks 
But part of that could just be I just need to get used to it because it's different, right? It's not like uh, maybe it's not bad. It's just not, I'm I'm not warmed up to it because I hated the Twitter interface when I first started using it too. You know, so the I hope hopefully that gets that gets worked out, and hopefully we start hearing from from Trump because whether we, whether we like it or not. He still has, uh, like, he's still the de facto leader. And he still has a chance to do, do something to not just be a huge failure. I just think that he's probably going to be a huge failure. <laughs> I Sorry, I just think that's what it's going to be. I think it's going to be like, holy shit, he fucking sucked. And that's, look, ultimately that'll be a good thing because it will no longer be, um, will no longer be tied to his brand his, of, uh, I mean, his ineffectual brand of, of uh, conservatism. If you can even call it that. I don't even know, what you, he's not a conservative. So I just noticed that on Twitter, MAGA terrorist is trending. What are the, what is this about? Oh, this is just uh I guess it's a hashtag that leftists are using when they post videos of people getting arrested at airports that are coming back home from Washington DC. But yeah, that, that's See, that's the other thing you got to think about, too. Uh, these people, I, and I told people, like, there was a reason why I wasn't going to go to this thing. And I knew that either way, no matter, there, there was no peaceful outcome. There was no possible way that it was going to be a peaceful demonstration. There was no possible way. Because even if, even if somehow that, you know, Trump got one of his long shots accomplished where uh, Pence you know, went rogue and was like, oh, I'm throwing away PA. Oh, no, magically Trump's the winner. Ta-da! Like, you know, even if one of these Q theories had panned out. Yeah, the, the, the Trump people would have been happy. But if you don't think that uh, there wouldn't be a response, I mean, you're crazy. There would be a total response. There would be violence in the streets. There would have been. So, and plus that wasn't going to happen. Well, it didn't happen. Right? So, so asking all these people to show up to get a bunch, get, to get some like really bad news. How did that, what did they expect? What do they fucking expect? But my point is, if you went to this, if, why are you flying back home? when you know that they're just going to be at the airport waiting for you. See, and that's the thing. When you live in a surveillance state, the more uh, coupled to the system you are, the more easily they can just go round you up. That woman I was talking about, the Rosenberg lady who bombed the Capitol, she was on the run uh, and still doing shit, by the way. Like, it wasn't just like she was hiding in some shed in the forest or something like that. They were still doing operations, if you will. And the law enforcement weren't, they weren't able to apprehend her until like two years later. Two years later, she bombed the fucking Capitol and they didn't catch up with her for two years. While in the meantime, they were like robbing banks and shit like that. But this guy sits in Pelosi's desk or sits at her desk and uh, FBI's got them already. That wouldn't be the case in the 80s. That wouldn't be the case. Uh, maybe not even in the 90s. This surveillance stuff, this surveillance state stuff is brand new. And people haven't figured out a way to, of getting around it. Because our lives are so... Everyone's got a little fucking tracking device in their pocket called their phone. And it's got a microphone on it. And it's got a camera on it. And it's got a, a literal tracking device, GPS on it. 
and it's got your name attached to it. And everyone carries it willingly everywhere they go. That's this is a new phenomenon. This is something I was telling you guys about when I was talking about that when I did that video about the rule of law where I said, look, these new technologies make it next to impossible to oppose the people who hold the keys to these technologies if they are not somehow policed, right? Like if they're just allowed to run amok, which is what's going on, right? It's it's close to impossible to uh, to combat that. Not impossible, but close to impossible. Until until some new theories, not theories, new uh, tactics and technologies are developed, right? Because as, as as I said the other night, it's not as simple as just telling your friend, "Hey, we're going to meet behind Farmer Jim's uh, barn at at midnight." Don't tell anyone. Like that's as much security as you needed back, not even that long ago, fifty years ago. And you could have you could organize, and no one would know. And you didn't have to no one and you didn't have to rely on your on the people that showed up to to understand anything high tech or understand encryption or or whatever you know like you didn't have to have like metal detectors to, to see if they had like phones or something secretly on them and stuff like it was just no everyone just said hey look meet behind farm like how do you think all these politicians in the 1800s were getting like tarred and feathered when was the last time a politician got tarred and feathered or anything similar to that. I mean, so it's, and now that the, uh, and look, it's, it's a double whammy, right? Because not only do they have, uh, this kind of stranglehold on, on the flow of information, they've made it to where even if like, uh, well, think about it this way, those of you in chat and me, you know, we're. A lot of us are, not all of us, but like there's probably a good uh, portion of us that are ideologically on the same page, to, at least to some extent, right? And so if we just wanted to organize a protest or something like that, uh, we would have to do that online because we're also scattered all over the world. Well, there's people that are probably listening that aren't even on, in the same hemisphere. So we're atomized. It's not like there's, not like there's this uh, s- state or even city where you can go live with a bunch of like-minded people. They've they've spread us all over the place. And so you have to, you have to use electronic means to, I mean, like we are right now, right? To communicate. So that there's, and even if you could communicate without electronic means, how effective are you going to be? Because you're so spread out. That's the other thing too. You know, it, it literally does take someone who's a hub, someone that's like Trump, right? That can say, they can, uh, well, provided that he has a means to communicate electronically to his people, which they, they kind of uh, took away a lot of those, right? A lot of those means to communicate electronically. Because they, they don't just monitor it, they can just take it away too. But it takes someone like a, a, a Trump that has a massive following uh, to then to organize something like, like uh, a, a, a large protest or rally or something like that, right? And they can, and they can just they can just kneecap him. They can just take away his Twitter. They can take away his YouTube. They can take away uh, everything. They can take away his platform that he created, Parler. Well, not that he created, but some Jewish donor created. If everyone is equal, none are free. Equality utopia. Well, yeah, that's the thing is is uh, you have a choice. You know, everyone's equal, or everyone's free. 
Can't have both. You absolutely can't have both. And you shouldn't want both. I I am I support everyone starting at the same starting line in the race. But I don't support everyone arriving at the finish line at the same time in the race. Or why are you even why do you even have a race? Are are you going to run your hardest if you know that when you once no matter how fast you run once you get to the finish line, they're going to make you wait for everyone else before you cross it. And then you're going to get, get, get the exact same exact same trophy that everyone else gets. Why, why would you bother? In fact, the slow people who are already slow, they're going to be even slower than they would normally be. Because like, wow, who cares? Fuck it. I could take all day. <laughs> and those assholes got to wait for me. That's why there is a right and a left. The left doesn't understand just basic shit like that. Do you hear anything about this shit with the Pope being arrested and Charlie? Look, nah, all that stuff is. I there are so many stupid, crazy things floating around right now, and most of them just sound like the ramblings of a uh, of a desperate and confused group of people. And uh, if some of them pan out to be real, okay, that'll be interesting. But the, you know, the the uh, the chance, the likelihood of most of this stuff being real is very low. And I understand that. I get why people are 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 clinging to these things as as being real because it's like the. The clock's ticking. We got nine days. Q's got nine days to show up. You can't, I mean, you can, look, there's going to be a, a certain amount of these people that'll, that'll kick it down the, kick it down, the, kick the can down the road a little further. But, I mean, look, by and large, most rational people, and as I've said, the right is the rational side, and that should tell you something about how irrational the left is, is the right's the rational side, and we still got to, and we still got all these irrational people. But it's panic. All this stuff that you see a lot of these people say, it's projection where they say, oh, they're doing this because they're scared. They're, they're panicking. They're panicking. I, I think you're panicking. I think you're scared. I think you're getting nervous. And I think this is a way of, of soothing, your self-soothing. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I doesn't look like uh, so far, <laughs> you know. And like, look, this isn't about me being right or wrong. It's, it's, let's just you got to use some discernment, right? Out of all these things that I've heard, like there's there was a video that's number one on uh, BitChute, or I, th- I think it was number one that someone sent me. I never even fucking heard of this guy. Uh, he, he's from across the pond somewhere. I don't know regionally which which part, but he's definitely in the UK somewhere. And he's, he was just dishing out white pills, like, you know, Q style white pills about how Trump's family and they were all under some mountain. And, but it's like, well, how the fuck would this guy know? You know, it, see, here's the thing that people don't understand is if there really is, like, let's say, like Alex Jones, right? Let's say Alex Jones or Q or any of these people, they really did have a direct line to the president. And they were the, they were the line of communication to the patriots, right? Like, uh, you know, they were the people chosen to be the ones to uh, release the information to you. Do you think that the, the deep state or the, you know, the satanic pedos or like whatever, right? The, you think they don't have access to this? this the same internet that you have it's not a secret if you know it if you know it they know it 
guaranteed. So why would they bother releasing it to some obscure YouTuber or, you know, like some weird uh, anonymous image board or, you know, why would they bother jump? Like, why would they do that? Who are they, who are they keeping the secret from when they do that? Nobody. So why wouldn't they just come out and say it? You know, like, seriously, why wouldn't they just come out and say it? If there was some, like, okay, if Q was real, and here's the other funny thing, when when Q would try to post proofs, as they used to call them, I don't think they do anymore, but maybe they do. Oh, look, it's a Q proof. It's a Q proof. And it was, a Q proof was like this thing that would uh, that was supposedly it was proof that Q was real, right? Because oh look, it, Q's real because at this rally, Trump pointed to some guy wearing a Q T-shirt or something like that. Like a lot of this, it was really a lot of this stuff was pretty ridiculous. And in my and, and I said this, I think in 2017 in that Q video I did, I said, look, if any of these so-called Q proofs proved that Q was who he said he was then at that point, there's literally no reason to stay anonymous. Right? There's no reason to. Because if you can prove that he's an insider, then doesn't that, wouldn't that prove it to the deep state and everybody else, all your enemies? They And so now, instead of just like some anonymous, weird guy posting on the internet, they would know, oh, no, this guy's legit. We need to, we need to listen to this. Because we figured out the secret, you know, trip code that Trump is using to talk to the, the patriots. I mean, wouldn't that just be a, a total collapse in in whatever security that they they had by by not proving who they were? I mean, it, this is simple logic, and like I said, we're we're supposed to be the rational side. But I think a lot of it's just PTSD at this point. Like we've lost so many times so often over and over and over again that there's just people are on the right are shell shocked. You know, they're they're like the guy in war, like in a in a trench. Who who's like drooling and, and, and giggling like a little girl. Because they can't face what's, you know, the, the, the horror that's going on around them. That's, and that's where we're at right now, unfortunately. Now, I hope that Gab catches on. I, I, I have good feeling. I have a good feeling about gab but even with gab we're not exactly out of you know out of the hot water because yeah gab has its own servers and everything else but uh obama handed the control of the internet over to that uh international i I forget the details i'm gonna have to look into it uh because it's gonna be important now exactly who holds these keys but the internet was de- invented, developed, and controlled by the United States until Obama. One of the many things that he did that that, has, that is, was playing the long game. So he handed over the uh, control of the internet to this uh, international body. And this international body is not going to be beholden to uh, free speech or anything like that. And this international body... Uh, could be the next level of deplatforming, if you will. Even if you have your own servers, it doesn't matter if they physically remove you from the internet. And again, I, this is something I have to research. And then you're stuck in a situation where like, okay, well, I guess we have to start using Tor. But even Tor isn't exactly uh, secure. It's more secure, I guess. It's a little easier to stay anonymous. And that's something else I have to research further. But my understanding is, uh, even with Tor, 
you have uh, uh, exit nodes. And without without getting too technical, and to be honest, because I, I have to re-read what I'm talking about because I don't remember all the details, but uh, these exit nodes that are part of the infrastructure of Tor have some vulnerabilities, especially if those exit nodes are run by federal agencies, which they most assuredly, some of them are. So that's something that I have to research further because I don't know all the technical details. But every, look, nothing's unhackable. Nothing's unhackable. Everything that, that's not hackable, it just they, no one's figured out the exploit yet. But it's hackable. The only way you make it not hackable is if you're not connected to the internet. But if you're allowing traffic to go in and out, you're hackable. It's hackable. And like I said, some of this stuff's on like the hardware level. There's uh, Intel, like the guy who wrote Linux, I believe it was, discovered like a secret set of instructions on Intel processors that uh, I, I haven't followed up on it, but they were at the time suspecting like, oh, this looks like it's literally a hardware backdoor that was installed so that agencies like the NSA on a hardware level, so it wouldn't matter uh, so much what your operating system was, so they wouldn't have to worry so much about the uh, uh, trying to find an exploit for your particular system. If you have an Intel processor, they've got a backdoor. And you guarantee, look, we, we've already discussed that these, these big companies are on the exact same page as the people that want us dead. So any of these little backdoors and things like that that have been implemented on the down low will be used against you. So, yeah, things aren't looking good. If if uh, if Biden gets sworn in and and uh, nothing stop prevents that from happening, or uh, you know, the, the, just the legislation they're talking about right now. I mean, they're already talking about putting you on lists. They are. They're talking about putting you on lists. Uh, similar. Remember what I was saying that this? I said this months ago. I said this uh, months ago, and I said this again like a week ago where I talked about how um, uh, it's very likely that they'll use the specter of white supremacist terror, right, to get a lot of what they want to get done quickly. And and I said that they would have uh, con so-called conservatives disavowing it. Look, it's already happened. I told you, I told you exactly this about uh, two months ago. It was just after the election. And I told you this just the other day. And I feel like this is, we're living it. We are absolutely living it. There's a very good possibility that all of this, uh, all these predictions that this, um, this guy made that, like I said, I didn't like using it because is it was just like an anonymous guy. And, it, it was, and some of it seemed a little LARPy, but like so far all of it's been pretty right on. And uh, the sealed indictment thing, right? Like if there's really all these sealed indictments, would you be that surprised if those indictments were for you? Well, maybe not you necessarily, but for people like me and, or, or maybe not even me, but people on, uh, on our side of the aisle, if you will, would you be that surprised? Would you be that surprised if, uh, I mean, look, Trump didn't have any... I think one thing is obvious. Trump had zero control of, over any of his agencies. 
he doesn't even seem to have had control over his immediate staff or his vice president or his uh, Supreme Court justice picks or his his, uh, House Majority Leader or anybody. Who did... (laughs) Who did Trump have control over? He barely had control over Melania. So is it really that crazy to think that these these hundreds of thousands or I don't know what the number is of sealed indictments that the Q people have been like all oh yeah this is it's all the deep state this is you know when the hammer comes down these indictments are going to be used to round up people like Hillary and And, uh, you know, Hillary's wearing an ankle bracelet so she can't leave the country and blah. What if they're for you? What if the Great Reset needs to wipe out some memory? What if the Great Reset... In order for it to work, they just need to they need to reconfigure the hardware a little bit first. They need to to get rid of all these legacy items that aren't going to be compatible with the Great Reset. We got to get rid of all this legacy hardware that isn't going to work with the Great Reset. And some of those legacy things, they're they're people, but are they really people? Are they really people if they get in the way of our Great Reset? I mean, look, I've told you, I don't, they don't think just even without a great reset, they don't think that you're people. (laughs) Now, look, I don't want you to think that I'm all doom and gloom. I'm actually not at all, but you have to also understand the limits uh, of what I can discuss here. Uh, I have a lot of other thoughts brewing and, you know, bouncing around in my head. Um, and some of, some of it's just like it's developing, right? Like I just don't have a, a like I don't have a crystal ball. I, I'm not like some kind of uh, super genius that can predict the future or anything like that. Um, in, the, in many ways, I'm just like you. So I'm taking all this in at the same time that you guys are. Uh, and I'm just trying to use my experience and my uh, um, ability to to work out complicated systems and try to figure out exactly what's going on. But it's look, it's we're kind of in uncharted waters in a lot of ways in this country. There's never been a situation quite like this. That's the one thing our enemies are right about. This is a this is something kind of new in America. Because if you think about it, even those bombings that I was talking about that happened in the Capitol, uh, those weren't, even though they're supported now, like you won't get anyone that's going to be uh, in the, the party that's in control to disavow any of that stuff. Absolutely they won't. Nor will they ever be asked to, right? Who's going to ask them to disavow it? That's how out of control we are. We don't even have the ability to, to get them on camera not disavowing it. But when those things happened, they were just kind of like uh, conducted by... They weren't conducted in the name of a... Well, actually, there was a bombing at the Pentagon that was in support of Ho Chi Minh. It was done, I think, on Ho Chi Minh's birthday or something like that around the same time. And I think by the same, some of the same people, right? I mean, look, like I said, in the sixties and seventies, the 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 leftists were quite militant, and because they're the one, and they won, and they wrote your history book when you went to school, so that's why you don't you, you don't. There's no segment in your history book called leftist terrorism or Jewish terrorism. Because the guy who owns the company who wrote all your history books is a leftist Jew. The last thing he's going to do is is tell you about that stuff. (sighs) All right. 
right, guys. I'll take a look at chat here for a little bit. People are too scared to accept the reality that they will not vote their way out of this. Well, absolutely. Absolutely, they will not vote their way out of this. And that, of course, it's frightening. That was the whole point of this uh, experiment. It was going to be the peaceful transfer of power. Uh, and the whole world thought that it was, it was, that was never going to work. And it, it's amazing that it ever did work. And it worked for a little over 200 years, and it seems to have stopped working. And people are going to have a hard time wrapping their head around that kind of a massive change. Do you think Utah is a good place to ride it out the next few years just because their ideology tends to be less trustful of, of the government? Depends on what part of Utah. I think in, in, anymore, Salt Lake, it's not like it used to be. Utah Well, Utah used to be 100% Mormon, but even uh, is is recent as like the 70s, I think it was still above 50, it was like 60% Mormon. And now I don't know what that number is, but it's, you know, it's drastically lower. And um, even Mormons, I mean, look, Romney's a Mormon. Uh, McMuffin's a Mormon. Uh, Harry Reid was a Mormon. So, I mean, look, I think it's more important that you go somewhere rural uh, in a state that maybe isn't going to fuck with you as much. I don't know about Utah's laws, their state laws. Uh, but Utah's got like a, a, a pretty good variety of uh, environments. They've got deserts. They've got forests, mountains. It's a big state. I've done, I've done some camping in Utah. And I've been, well, I've been, it's been a long time, but I've been all over the state in Utah. And there's a lot of... Uh, cool camping area so i don't know it depends i've got friends that have uh, cabins in in utah and that's like their ejection seat right like if shit gets real they're going to utah in the mountains do you think the crackdown on millions of americans and the coming economic depression will lead to an overplay of their hand i don't know like like uh Every time you think, well, this should be enough to get people pissed off, it does for maybe like a day or so, but everyone's got the memory of a fucking goldfish. And then, you know, it's like I was saying with uh, uh, Ashley uh, Babbitt. I don't know that, that like, it's, it seems like a big deal now. I don't know that in, in like a couple months, people are even going to, they're going to be like, Ashley who? And not all of that's their fault. I mean, some of it's just because the information is so, there's just so much information. A hundred years ago, up until like, well, up until really 10 to 20 years ago, human beings aren't, we have not evolved to uh, process this much data constantly like we have to do today. This is totally new and it, it overloads a lot of people's systems. And uh, I think that's a little bit different uh, depending on generations. Like I think if you were born and raised using computers uh, you might have a little better of a chance uh, navigating this kind of a landscape but there's a reason why the, the boomers are kind of you know they're overwhelmed they didn't there was no internet when they were born uh, things were simpler then and then the amount of information being flung at them was, was significantly less and significantly less frequent I live in Utah. Half of it is a hellscape. If it was any more red, it would be, what did it say? In a doom game. Uh, do you think there'll be a financial crash? It never seems to happen despite the money being printed all the time. That's the thing is like, yeah, it probably should have crashed already, right? Probably should have, at the very least, should have crashed in 2008. When we had the uh, all the bailouts, and what do they do? They just print up money, and because money's fake, they can kind of print up an infinite amount of money. It's not based on anything. They don't have to go mine more gold. But yeah, eventually, uh, what's it, what's going to happen? It's not going to be so much that they're going to. Oh no, we can't print any more money. The printer stopped working. It's going to be another country that is going to have a competing currency or something, or maybe it'll be. Uh, uh, I don't know what it'll be. But I know that happened in the Roman Empire towards the end 
where they were they were minting coins uh, with less and less and less and less silver in it until there was like almost no silver at all. How many old hat guys, old hat guys, are with us? Old hat guys? What's old hat guys? I'm not sure what old hat guys are. Leftists are already tweeting pics of Gaddafi sodomized body with subtitles that this is what awaits Trumpers. Yeah, no, they, they're out for blood and none of them are going to get banned from Twitter because Twitter is on their team. This is something that should have been addressed a really long time ago. And uh, Trump was too busy monitoring the situation to actually do anything about it. Uh, Devin, have you ever heard of the pole strap project? They seemed a bit LARPy, but they might, uh, they made a video on you on one of their channels. They did. I, I don't really know much about it. I'd have to look into it. Um, Vertigo Politics. I didn't know that guy was still around, but he made good videos. The fact that when you type Q on Google, QAnon is the first thing that comes up proves it's bullshit. Or it just proves there's a lot of people Googling it, you know? I mean, yeah, they can manipulate that stuff, obviously, and they filter it or whatever. But, I don't know. So I'm going to take a real... I, I got I really got to piss. So <laughs> I'm going to replay the, uh, the news report from 1971, where it is talking about the bombing that Bill Ayers, the guy who wrote Obama's autobiography and launched Obama's political career in his living room, talks about the bombing he did on the Capitol building in 1971. At one minute before one o'clock this morning, the switchboard at the Capitol received a phone call. A man's voice said a bomb would go off in the building in half an hour. At 1.30 in the morning, it did. In a small, unmarked restroom on the ground floor of the Senate side, next to a barber shop and near several small offices, including one committee hearing room. For a report on the first serious damage to the nation's foremost structure since the British burned it in 1814, here is ABC congressional correspondent Bob Clark. There was alarm for a time that other bombs might still be hidden inside the Capitol. Police used dogs specially trained to sniff out explosives in a painstaking search both inside and outside the building. The single bomb set off by a timing device left the men's room a shambles, plumbing demolished, Bricks and plaster ripped from walls. Army and FBI experts sifted the debris, seeking a clue to the nature of the explosive. There was heavy damage to the nearby barber shop. Windows were smashed there and 100 feet away in the Senate restaurant, where tables were overturned and a priceless stained glass mosaic destroyed. Damage estimated in the hundreds of thousands of dollars might have been far worse, but for the three-foot-thick walls in the oldest part of the Capitol. As it was, the violent explosion ripped off doors in nearby conference rooms. There was no damage to the Senate chamber itself on the floor above. Daylight revealed more smashed windows and debris. Tourists were barred from the Senate wing all day, but the entire Capitol will be reopened to the public as soon as possible. Everyone entering the Senate wing today had to pass a security check. So once again, if you're a little bit late to the stream, that's literally the same people, not the same kind of people. That's literally the same people that are saying the, the people that did that, the people responsible for that and other bombings. And that was just one of them. Those are the same people telling you that some guy with horns on his head dressed as like a, I don't even know, like a, a bison tromping around taking selfies inside the Capitol building that that guy that guy's a, a, a domestic terrorist like the, the same people it's the, not the, like I said not the same kind of people that's the same people the son of the guy who did that the son like the actual the son of the guy who, who did that is the DA in San Francisco 
right now. And they're all out of prison. None of them are, are in prison still. And they're all sitting on the boards of different things. Like I mentioned, uh, uh, what was her name? Let's see here. I mentioned uh, the woman who bombed the Capitol building in 1983. Susan Rosenberg. She's on the board at Black Lives Matter. She's part of the Black Lives Matter global movement. And not just Black Lives Matter. She's a part of all kinds of these, all of these organizations. These are literally the same people. If someone wants to donate but wants you to get as much as possible without someone taking overhead, where should they do it? Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I know the price is a little bit wonky right now. I, I think it, I, I don't pay attention to it that much. Uh, maybe I should, but I think it's like kind of crashing right now. Uh, so I don't know if it's a good time to get it. And then your money that you just got, you know, that's the, that's the shitty thing about Bitcoin. It's like, oh, I want to do it. Let's say you wanted to donate a hundred bucks. Like I want to donate a hundred bucks. So you buy like a hundred dollars in Bitcoin. And then by the time you send it to me, it's worth 50 bucks. <laughs> you know, like it's, I get it, you know? Uh, subscribe star though, subscribe star forward slash black pill is a, uh, those guys are, are, have withstood so far, at least the pressure. I don't know if that'll last forever. I think they had to be, uh, uh, I think they had to be, um, I think they're a Russian company or something. They're, they're a foreign company. I don't think they could be American. Someone asked if I was INTJ. No, I'm actually INTP. Close, though. So, the funny thing is, I was talking about how... Um, uh, the reason... Well, I'll just say, the reason I know that I'm INTP is every once in a while, you'll see these threads on poll about gate. Like, oh, the gate system. When I was a kid, they put me in this weird you know, program called the gate program. I went to an... Like, most of gate was like a pullout program. Like during your class, normal class, you'd get, you'd leave, or maybe it was like one or two days a week or something like that. And then you did these weird gate classes and it stood for uh, gifted and talented education. And you, you t- basically took this IQ test. And then like, if you were exceeded some threshold, they would take you out. And, and not every state did this, but um, the state that I was in did this. But I went to like a, an all gate school. Like the entire school was gate. Um, and, uh, they, they did do weird. It was very weird. It was very weird. And one of the tests they did was the, the Myers-Briggs and I was INTP at the time. I was in gate two. Yep. Gate was weird. Yeah. I was in gate during elementary. Yep. I see. I was in a weird gate school that went all the way up to uh, eighth grade. But uh, I did not, I, I think I've talked about this. My parents were moved around a lot and I switched schools. The funny thing is I switched in and out of that school because of where I lived uh, like three times. So I went there for like a couple years and then I went to a, a normie school with pullout program. And then I went, went back to that school and it was like the same kids. I went to like third grade and I was like, oh, it's all weird now because you guys are all old. And I guess so am I. Um, but yeah, it was, it was like a really weird school. Uh, went off to the college for a couple classes in particular. Had some sociology classes. Uh, Gate was... I uh, went too fast. Something about Gate. Gate was coolish. Yeah, well, like, you know, when you were in the pullout program of Gate, it was mostly just, hey, let's fuck around with Plato. Or, like, if some of it was... It depends on if your Gate teacher was just phoning it in or not. Because a lot of times they're just like, well, you're smart. Do smart things. And you're just like, uh, no, I'm a teenager. <laughs> I don't want to do smart things. I'm going to just fuck around during this class. And that's what a lot of people did. So it's just kind of like a waste of time, really. Um, I'm going to open up the chest again. We might wrap things up pretty quick here. Unless there's something else you guys wanted to talk about. Yeah, Gate was all about free range learning centered education. I got the hell out after the pullout went. Yeah, no, no, the, the, so Gate... 
here's the other thing. Gay, it was it, it was designed and operated by boomers, like hippie boomers. So that was the other problem with it is that it was it was free range uh, education in in some respects. So like, yeah, not everyone that's smart wants to study all the time, or use their time wisely. So it was not the best environment. Look, I don't regret that my parents put me in it because it was, there was definitely some benefits to it and uh, it wasn't all bad, but there was certainly like certain, certain parts of it, I think stunted my, my growth in a little bit of, you know, in, in a fashion. What do I think about the Pope? I think he's probably a homosexual pedophile. Likely satanic. I think it's weird that uh, the uh, the last pope stepped down. Like I, I, I don't think that had happened for like five hundred years. You know, usually, you're pope, you're pope for life. Um, and now that we've we had that pope step down, and isn't there? I might be wrong about this, but I thought I had read somewhere that even this pope is supposed to be stepping down this summer or something like that. So it's like, what the hell's going on over there? And the funny thing is, there's a lot of Catholics that would agree that, yeah, he's a homosexual pedophile. But there's apparently no mechanism, just like, it's just like with America, right? Even if you think your leaders are homosexual pedophiles or satanic homosexual pedophiles, there's no mechanism to do anything about it. And apparently the Catholic Church is no different. People talking about Jesuits. I actually don't even know what a Jesuit. I mean, I, I hear that get thrown around. I'm just not Catholic. And uh, Catholicism, just in general, kind of confuses me. No, I have not re- read the Turner Diaries yet. I stuck with homeschool gang while still staying in the public education. Yeah, my, my, uh, I had a kid brother that was mostly homeschool, and I think he went to a class at the high school maybe once a week or something like that so that he wouldn't be completely socially isolated at home. But there was also church. Uh, and, and yeah, if you have... I wouldn't send my kid to... I wouldn't even do that these days. If you were doing homeschool right now, I would not... I'd find a way to interact with other homeschool kids. I would never send my kid to a, a public school, not in a million fucking years. Um, sometimes I dream that I forgot my locker combination, but I have never used my locker. Is your brother black pilled? No, my brother is kind of a cuck. My brother, uh, I was not invited to his wedding because I'm a Nazi. Uh, apparently, I'm a Nazi, and he didn't want a Nazi at his wedding, so I was disinvited to his wedding. So he is he's he's definitely not black pilled. I could tell you more, but I don't you know. I'm not going to air air out any family laundry on a live stream. Uh but yeah, that was uh that was a disappointment, obviously. Uh but it is what it is. This is what happens when you you know, when there was the civil war in in you know, the, the first civil war in America. You know, they often talk about there was there were brothers shooting at their brother like, like literally their, you know, brother against brother. It wasn't not metaphorically like actual brother against brother on the battlefield. And if it ever comes turns into something like that again, you'll have that same scenario. I think all of you guys, it's not like, I don't think there's, it's very rare that is there an, an entire family that's based. They didn't just atomize uh, the society on a, on a macro level. They've atomized us on a micro level. And a lot of parents are just terrible parents, right? Like they, they're, we talked about the free range education. There's a lot of free range parenting going on. And what that really ends up being is that the child is raised by the television or by the internet. 
So, I mean, if you're not the one programming your kid, someone is. Someone's doing that. Holy shit, lefty brother, that's rough. Yeah, that's... It's not just, it's not the only sibling that has trouble with my politics. And the funny thing is they don't even really a hundred percent know because they're, they're pretty normy. They're kind of, they're just kind of out of touch people. Uh, I hope they never hear this. I don't think they will, <laughs> which is why I can say it. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're certainly not as aware of things as I am. And, uh, they're not even, they're, and they're not super aware of what I do like that. And it's not, I don't hide it, you know, it's just that they, they're not, none of them have read my own, my, like none of them, they all know, I, or at least I think they all know I've written a book and none of them have read it. You know, like it's just, they, they just, they don't, they're all, like I said, normies are just, they kind of just, that's why I, I'm kind of blackpilled on this whole, uh, idea that everyone's going to rise up or what. No, they're not. Cause a lot of my family members are, uh, ideologically and morally on the same page if they took the time to think about it, but they don't take the time to think about it. They're just doing their own lives. And you know, they're raising their families, going to their jobs, pushing the buttons, pulling the levers. And that's most of Earth. Oh, someone just said they're my mom. Sorry, mom. <laughs> INTP is rare might be why. Is it is it that rare? I didn't think it was that rare because I've seen threads on poll where people say, uh, you know, what is your thing? And there's like a whole lot of, well, maybe it's rare just that INT people uh, end up on poll for some reason. What about your parents? Uh, my dad is, is pretty apolitical, weirdly enough. And my mom, uh, has always been blackpilled. Uh, in fact, when I was a kid, she was having me watch like VHS tapes <laughs> of the Clinton body count stuff. Like before there was really an internet or there wasn't internet video. That's how, that's how this stuff got around. You know, people would share VHS tapes or bootlegs of, uh, you know, whatever video. And, uh, she listened to, she probably still does. I don't know, but she listened to Rush Limbaugh all the time. So I got into talk radio from a very early age. And, uh, I mean, like I said, I've been following politics most of my life. Like I was listening to Rush Limbaugh in my mom's car when I was like seven, you know? And, uh, obviously I've, I've moved beyond that, but I've, I've been pretty plugged into politics my whole life. Um, Devin was blackpilled before it was cool. Yep. Well, I don't think it's cool. It's still not cool. We can say that once it's cool. Right now, it's not cool. The number one, the number one trending video on BitChute isn't a blackpilled video. It's a a boomer telling you that to trust the plan. Still, that whole page is basically white pills. Um, moving pretty fast getting pilled by mom is the best thing you could have my mom made me watch zeitgeist that's kind of funny yeah that's and that's the thing is they did a people that's that's why you can't let your children be raised by the television or by the internet because they will be raised by the television or the internet. And then you'll next thing you know, your daughter's going to be that fucking cunt on Twitter that's turning in her whole entire family. Oh, I saw my family in the videos of the Capitol and I've turned them all in. I've named them. And and she has like a fans because of this. You know, that in fact, there's like a whole new subreddit devoted to people turning in their friends and family that they identified in the video. That's what happens when you let the internet and the television raise your kids. You're basically letting Google 
and uh, CNN. I mean, we've all seen the 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 uh, infographics on on who runs those media companies. That's who's raising your children. If you don't do it, you're outsourcing it to the enemy, and of course they're going to turn you in. Of course they're going to turn you in. All right, guys. So we're over the two-hour mark, and it's pretty late here. I think we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, I, I will stream every night up until, well, unless they kick me off, up until the, uh, you know, knock on wood, until the uh, 20th. Or, you know, on the 20th as well, because I'm sure that's going to be... That'll be an interesting stream, right? Or until something crazy happens. Because I suspect, honestly, I mean, as as disappointing this might be to a lot of people, I think it's going to be a fairly uneventful nine days. I mean, not uneventful in that, uh, I mean, there's going to be bad news. (laughs) I'm sure we'll hear more stories about what they want, what kind of legislation Biden wants to sign on January 21st. But there's not going to be, uh, I don't think there's going to be any uh, amazing X-Men superhero cape shit type of uh, solutions to people's problems in the next nine days. But we'll see. I'll be the first one to celebrate if that happens. And we'll celebrate it right here on a pill stream. For Black Pilled, I am Devin Stack. <laughs>